Hello and welcome to the Run Testers Different Gear. We are here at Box Park in Shoreditch to celebrate the release of the brand new On Cloud Monster shoe that we're all sporting. I'm joined here by the full gamut, almost the full gamut of the Run Testers. And today we're going to be exploring all of the different things inside running gear and tech which can help you as a runner perform. Hello and welcome to the Run Testers Different Gear, your monthly, quarterly, I mean, as and when insight into the world of running gear and tech. We are here in Box Park in Shoreditch to celebrate the release of the brand new Cloud Monster shoe from On. My name is Danny, I'm the host of the Big Run podcast. And today we're going to be looking at all manner of different running tech. We're going to be looking at the, at the holistic runner. We're going to be looking at sleep, nutrition, recovery, as well as training and racing. <music> So let, let's start with nutrition. I feel like nutrition's come come quite a long way in such a relatively short mm. space of time from like the, the flat coke in the middle of a marathon or the, the jelly babies or the fizzy worms, I believe. That's, that's, your, that's your preferred method of uh, <laughs> nu nutrition. <laughs> so what kind of tech can we use to help incorporate the nutrition and, and, and get good at our nutrition? Yeah, so I think the one thing, there's a, there's a huge trend in kind of nutrition tech for kind of running. The main thing here we're looking at is things getting super personal. Right. So we're looking at, there's, there's three main products I wanted to talk about. One of them is called FuelWise. It's a feature on Polar's watches. And this basically lets you pump in a load of data about what your run's going to be, how long it's going to take, what your estimated intensity is going to be. And then it will tell you how much carbs you need to take to fuel that run. And then on the run, it will use your heart rate to kind of personalize your fueling strategy, give you alerts and reminders as and when you need to eat. So it's based on what you're actually doing in real time. So you're getting a little bit more granular and a little bit more kind of live in real time than you would be from just taking an off the shelf kind of fueling strategy. That's one thing. Another really big thing is kind of looking at fuel sources that you're currently burning. There's a really sort of interesting product called Lumen. It's a metabolic cart. It's a piece of kind of, normally this is a huge piece of lab kit. It's been miniaturized into a, essentially a breathalyzer that sniffs the carbon dioxide in your breath. And from that, it's able to extrapolate whether or not you're burning fat or carbs as the main source of fuel. Now, it's great in kind of daily life to see how and when you're fueling and what you need to be eating a little bit more intelligently. But I think from a running perspective, what's really interesting is you can breathe into this before you go and do a run, and it will tell you if you're already burning carbs, that you might not need to add extra fuel. Where I found that really useful is in something like when I'm about to go out and do like an hour's run, and sometimes I'd be guilty of so I'd just eat a banana just because I feel like I ought to, but that kind of fueling that you might not need to do. And also, I guess it can help you understand whether or not you're, you're getting a kind of a good solid metabolic kind of system that is able to switch between those two fuel sources, fat and, and carbs for, for, for fuel. Nice, nice. The final thing I think that's also kind of really interesting is real-time blood glucose monitoring. So small skin-worn sensors that let you look into your current kind of blood sugar levels. And all of these things can tell, you know, one of the things I've used this for is I've used it to really work out on a run some of the feelings that I've had, what they actually mean. So I've been out, empty legs, feel like I'm bonking, Normally, I'm not really sure if that's the case. Been able to now look at what my blood glucose monitor is telling me by tapping the phone on it, and it says that my blood sugar levels have really dropped. So those three things are letting us get kind of super personal about how we kind of fuel on the run. Okay, Kieran. Well, you're 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 an ultra runner, you know, seven marathons in, in seven days kind of guy. But what about the, the different types of runners? Like, are there are there other ways to apply your nutrition in, in different kind of ways and, and means? Guys, anyone want to chip in here? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you, Nick. See, I use some of the same stuff Kieran's talked about, like the Lumen, and also okay. the VO2 Master Kieran's going at the moment, like which can you can actually test your resting metabolic rate with it and learn how many carbs you're burning, kind of just with general use. So I, basically, using the, both of those bits of kit, I found out that a very high resting metabolic rate, burning loads of carbs, lots of calories, and I'm just sitting around doing nothing. Uh, and also, I <laughs> very rarely go into fat burning, but I'm always burning carbs. So. The fact that I was eating loads and basically supported the fact that I was eating loads and loads and loads of carbs and supporting my marathon training, and I felt a lot better about that fact. So that was quite nice. So yeah, if tech can tell you that, oh yeah, it's fine, keep eating the ridiculous amounts of food you're eating, but that's great tech, I think. That's fantastic. <laughs> Such validation for eating all of those carbohydrates. Yeah. And, it, and it also basically made me start to feel stuff a bit better in the week. So I did quite a few hard sessions each week, and actually, it's worth fueling a lot because you've got to fuel for the run after and the run after that as well as the one you're on when you're doing a hard training load and also you've got fuel for your day so if i'm going out in the morning and doing a hard training run and then i've got to look after my toddler daughter the rest of the day actually it takes as much energy and you've got to make sure you're, you're not finishing the run completely empty you've got to try and actually up that intake a bit yeah i suppose 
I suppose as well it sort of takes out the guessing game a little bit of nutrition because sometimes it can feel a bit of like a bit of potluck in terms of what you feel so to have that validation <laughs> yeah. and to find out that you are naturally burning uh, calories while at rest <laughs> you swine yeah, <laughs> you lucky you lucky lucky man well, what about you Tom what's your experience with nutrition and tech <laughs> well I think I always you know with this too, he's an ultra runner he's a very fast runner I'm more sort of a general runner and I think the tech around nutrition for sort of the general runners isn't quite is really that useful yet. You really need to be at a certain level to find it useful. You, if you're at a point where you're a runner, you maybe started running, you're sort of doing general running, it really probably more comes down to just the logic of diet and what you need to eat to do that. So I think tech is probably still at that sort of, and you see this a lot with tech, it starts at that more advanced extreme level because that's where a lot of the focus is initially. Mm. But I, I want to see it trickle down, but I just don't think it's there yet for the sort of more general runners just looking for advice on what to eat because it's really, you know, you have to do it yourself at the moment. Mm. I also think there's, there's one thing with this which I, I found most interesting about it is, you know, some of it's not entirely infallible in terms of the accuracy. Mm. So you are kind of using it as a little bit of a, of a benchmark. But the one thing, I've, it basically gets you thinking about what you're doing. And I think that's the strongest point of it, actually. Whether it's rather, and you, you start to kind of engage a little bit more with how you're fueling, what you're feeling, you know, how you're, how you're kind of going out, fueling a run, what you're fueling on, how you're recovering. And I, that, for me, has been the kind of awakening a little bit. You can use this tech to start to try and get in touch with your own kind of sense of, of kind of tuning your fueling, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily use it as kind of an absolute letter of the law. I, I kind of just have a look at it and use it as another kind of piece of information to guide how I'm going to fuel my run. If I'm hungry on a run and Polar says it's not time to eat, I'm eating. You know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's a really good important sort of point to make that it's just another tool in the arsenal I think and to, to also I think as, as well have a, a good read on your own nutrition and not relying solely on the tech to be the t person to tell you when it's time to eat because yeah, yeah. I'm very much like you when I want to eat, I want to eat. <laughs> Great stuff. So it feels like one of the other huge areas when it comes to, to running tech or running performances is sleep. And Jane, thank you so much for, for joining us for this discussion. Um, it feels like there's a lot out there as well in terms of the technology available because when, when you're not sleeping well, you can really feel it in terms of performance. So what kind of stuff can runners look to in terms of tech when it comes to sleep? I'll take this one. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think there is a lot out there for sleep. Sleep is a really difficult one because it's there's so many factors just involved in it. So sleep has been around in tech for a long time. Like 10 years ago, people had sleep on their Fitbits. It just told them how much you sleep. That was it really. It doesn't go into any more detail. Over time, that has got more granular. So if you look at something like Garmin's uh, advanced sleep functions at the moment, you go into like REM, you go into deep sleep, you go into light sleep, which is pretty much standard across the board now. So that sort of um, level of information about sleep is getting there. It's becoming really clear um, the type of sleep that you can get. But with a lot of wearable tech, the, the metrics behind it, they're not that accurate. So sleep, unlike something like um, exercise, where you can very easily see how much exercise you've done, how fast you've gone, all that sort of stuff, sleep is a bit of an unknown. Like the only real way to know sleep is through brain scanning. And they, they, do, they do research between sleep and brain scanning, and it's, it's not very accurate in comparison, or not, not as close as it should be really. So really it's a guideline, the sleeping stuff. Um, but um, tech is, there's lots of interest, um, Kieran knows about a lot of these. So sleep is something that's been a massive focus in not just general tech, but also in fitness and stuff because of the impact it has. There's probably nothing as important as sleep to your training because you can do everything, but if you don't get the right sleep, it, you just, you, it just completely you know, ruins all that training you're doing. So there are lots and lots of tech uh, solutions out there to help people sleep and to help monitor it. So to help people sleep, you've got you know, mattresses that, that measure that you're sleeping and how, how you're landing on the bed. There's smart uh, pillows that measure <laughs> when your head is moving around throughout okay, the night. Okay. But ultimately, and I'm a skeptic when it comes to a lot of new tech like this, I think that with sleep, it, there's a lot of information out there, but it's really very specific to the individual. Running, if, if you're running a lot and it's telling you, you know, you've ran for two days in a row, maybe have a rest day, that's pretty logical. Right? You, most people on a, on, the, on a level would go, yeah, okay, that's logical. Again, it comes down to the individual. So, you know, Nick might be able to have less recovery than me because he's running at a higher level. He's nodding there. Um, but with sleep, that you can't do, with sleep, you can't do that because you just don't know. You, do, you don't know how much sleep people need. You don't know 
you know, if they've got any conditions that may mean that they need more sleep than other people. So I think sleep is such a massive area. Tech is moving along to make differences in that, but I think we're a long way off some of the other um, smart tech that we've got around sleep that, um, that, that, we're, that we're seeing at the moment. Kieran's looking at me now. I know he's got a lot of sleep things he tests. <laughs> I'm all about the sleep. I mean, it's really true. There's studies that show that for, for you can have, basically you can get a 10% performance improvement by getting the right amount of sleep. Yeah. When we're all out buying shoes that offer us 4% mm -hmm. and don't go to bed at the right time, you know, we're spending 250 quid. There's a cheaper way actually to up your performance and improvement. The one thing I've just come off the back of testing kind of three or four products kind of side by side in terms of their sleep accuracy. And it's, it's often number one, you know, you kind of, it could be anything. Some of them will clock you going to, to falling asleep at the wrong time. Some of them will have me asleep on the sofa, others, you know, and they all seem to sort of have their own different kind of spasms at different times. But there are some really, really cool things. Like I've tested one thing called Eight Sleep. It's a smart mattress that heats and cools the bed with your kind of sleep rhythms to keep you optimally kind of temp temperate to maximize your sleep in those kind of different sleep cycles. So your kind of, your temperature changes depending on those sleep cycles. So you need to be cooler at some times, hotter at others. This thing kind of learns what you like and what I like, and it kind of does it automatically for you. It's really good. It also tracks your sleep and your sleep accuracy. But I guess, you know, one of, one of the things, there's lots of these things that can, can do it. I, I think, again, if you go back to the basics with it, I think it's the most useful thing that I get out of any of the sleep tech is looking at my sleep or going to bed time am I getting out of bed time and basically going to bed at the same time every night and then getting out of bed as soon as you wake up without kind of dozing I think you know something like whoop will give you recommended sleep based on your strain so it will tell you you know you've been tra training a lot harder you need more sleep tonight but I think kind of consistency is the one thing that most of us can control and can get to but yeah, I'm gonna, oh, that's that's yeah. my bit on sleep. I think you've used. I was going to say to Jane. Just to tag into that, I think that's a really important point there. That thing of like uh, enabling consistency when it comes to sleep and having tech as something as a as a cue of like this perhaps is the time you should think about going to bed. Like these are the kind of hours that you should be getting. Like as a as a prompt almost rather than a kind of like this is how you're sleeping kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah, and I think it's pretty widely held that the sleep stage kind of readings, even by the companies themselves, they'll admit something like eight sleep. They don't even bother. They they track it. But they don't use it in the sleep the overall sleep score because they know that it's not accurate yeah. so they're kind of deep like all of those things i would kind of slightly disregard those and just look at whether or not you're being consistent and getting enough and how you feel about the quality jen what have you been testing and have you been getting your eight hours <laughs> so i'm a really good sleeper i am i can sleep forever but i think my problem with it is it doesn't account like i got a puppy i always bang on about her <laughs> but like suddenly I wasn't getting eight hours and it actually made me feel really rubbish because I was constantly being held accountable by this whoop. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, like what Kieran says, if you just make sure you get to bed on time, you're not looking at your phone for hours. Sometimes it's, I think sometimes we need to untech sleep. So I think the more, sometimes for me, the more stats and the more like, it gives me more to worry about, which then yeah. stops me yeah. sleeping. So I've used whoop, but I've taken it off now because it just kept telling me I wasn't getting enough sleep because of the puppy. And I was kind of like, I know that, <laughs> I yeah. feel tired. So I think sometimes just keeping it really simple is better than overloading yourself with tech. Mm. So. Yes. <laughs> I think there's, there's, there's definitely something to be said for sleep in that training at many levels, you don't know, it, it's hard to gauge if you're doing the right or wrong thing. So it might be that you feel okay, but you're definitely running too much and you don't, just don't know it. And eventually you will get injured or something off the back of that. Sleep is different. You know if you've not slept properly and you know if you're not working properly. So using metrics, I think they actually did a research study where they, they got a load of people to wear a wearable and they faked some of the sleep um, information for one group and it didn't have any impact because um, the people knew, you know, if you're feeling bad, you feel bad. If you feel tired, if you get up in the morning, you've not had a good sleep, you go, I'm going to need to get to bed early. You don't go, well, it says, it says I'm fine. So I'm going to carry on regardless. So I think sleep, there's, a, there's an element of sleep where you can get a lot of information about it. And, and I always moan quite a lot about companies that keep adding more metrics and analytics or something when people don't really need it. But with sleep, it's a dangerous one to use metrics for really heavily without thinking, well, actually, is, you know, what, is it down to me? Do I need to, you know, do I need that much sleep or do I not need that much sleep? So yeah, I, I think it's an interesting area and I think we're a long way off solving that, to be honest. Sorry, Karen. I think extending from that, there's the other thing is that a lot of some of the, the trackers use the sleep metrics 
to tell you to build into your kind of readiness score. So there's nothing yeah. we'll talk about recovery, yeah. but often the sleep metrics aren't quite spot on. So if you're then using that to judge whether or not you go and train hard that day or not, it's not re not entirely reliable. And again, I sort of use this though, my use of tech is kind of in tandem. So I'll keep a log. So I've kept a log of how I feel when I wake up in tandem with the data that I'm getting and I can kind of make a bit of a smarter judgment. I can start to spot when the tech is wildly out and over time I can start to sort of make some smarter decisions. The tech helps, but it's not kind of, again, the thing that makes my decisions for me. Great. So it's, it's moving in the right direction, it's not quite there, so a little bit of caution, a little bit of judging your own sort of sense of how tired you are as well, and uh, yeah. also the, the, the other aspects outside of sleep as well that can also affect your sort of sleep as well, so it's always important to, mm -hmm. to remind those things as well. Great. Okay, so you're, you're sleeping well, you're, you're eating all the right stuff, so how can we translate that into, into real world performance in your, in your runs and, and in your races? I'm looking at you, you're, you're, you're a fast runner, so I'm going to say to you. Um, yeah, so when I, they talked about it previously in the sleep section, how they kind of use that data and feed that into like a next day kind of readiness score or something like that, or you know, how much strain you're under and how much strain you should do each day. And that's the kind of thing I like to look at and wearables. And uh, it's all usually based on things like your heart rate variability and other things in your sleep. But a lot of it does come back to that heart rate variability. And uh, I think if you, if you actually really know your stuff, you can end up just using the raw data rather than the readiness scores from each individual bit of tech. But I do basically try and make sure I've got a good readiness score on a big workout day or a race day. So like in the week before, I'll be really working on it with the Aura Ring, for example, something like that, which I, you know, think give accurate, give, I think it gives accurate data. So, you know, I think it just gives you a little target to build to. And that means like, it really does help you break up your week. If you're doing like easy run, oh, I'm not gonna worry too much the night before about getting to bed early. I might have some alcohol. Day before a workout, I will cut all that out, go to bed early, because I want to wake up and see a big score saying, you're ready to nail this workout or this race day because of the way your heart rate variability has been overnight. So basically, there's lots of things that can affect you kind of each day. And I think trying to keep tabs on them for key days is what I like to do. And as a man, there's loads of things I can control. There's obviously an extra factor if you're a woman, right? Um, which is yes. something that these wearables do look into now. Yeah, I think it's something that's come along in the last few years, which is so clever and smart and has been missing for so long is like being able to track your period and your garments. I think sometimes a month I can wake up and feel really ready to go and then the next day really not ready to go and it's out of my control and it's out of all women's control. So I think I use my Garmin and I use an app as well and just keeping kind of tabs on what time of my cycle I'm in can help me know how much I can kind of give in a session or if a session doesn't go to plan I can be like well that might be why and it kind of I think none of you will be able to relate we're nodding we're nodding yeah so yeah, yeah. We're nodding. it's so smart and so clever it's and like it's reassurance so, isn't it yeah, yeah it's yeah, reassurance yeah. that I'm not I'm not getting worse or I'm not you know or you know I know that certain times of the month I might get sciatica and I need to rein it in a bit and do you know what I mean it's like it just helps you keep tabs on your body and your performance and to also normalise that within within this this whole framework yeah, as well. Like, like not we shouldn't be sort I'm of jealous like that you can just go out and be like to us. smash every session and it's, it's, it's not the same for women. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so, and I, yeah, and on that, like, I, I always think it's really interesting because before I didn't used to run with all this tech, even like in the last few years, but I had a coach and we'd go out and I'd, I wouldn't hit a session very well. And you go, that's weird because I know you can run that session based on everything you've done in your running. Mm. But obviously he's a distance coach. He goes, oh, well, what's happened the last couple of days? That kind of thing. So with me, like, you know, you can, you can just see like, okay, yeah, you had a late night working, you ate badly that day and it all yeah. just added up, added up. And then on the session day, it didn't go too well. So that's why I think you can use those trends, just make sure, obviously, like I say, some things you can't control so well, but uh, um, yeah, you can just make sure you're ready to go on that particular day. Okay, so the given day arrives. <laughs> it's, it's Sunday morning, you've got up early, you've had your nutrition, you've got your eight hours, it's race day. How do we execute? I can take that. I mean, first of all, I would say it's a huge thing to kind of put a lot of trust into a piece of tech to kind of help you get through a race. And I've had some experience. I've had some good experiences. I've had some bad experiences. I had a really good experience with um, Garmin's Pace Pro pacing strategies, which is a feature that they've rolled out over the last few years. And essentially, that's you putting in the course profile. It's helping you to kind of manage that pacing during the race and in real time kind of see where you're at and try and get you where you need to get with your time. I, I used it um, a few years ago in the, the Great South Run. The course wasn't 100% accurate in terms of the course profile, but I managed to kind of use it to better manage my race. So there is the tech that's there. I mean, Nick would probably say, you know, nothing can really replace kind of getting that kind of coach feeling of knowing what you're doing, preparing yourself, but putting that trust in tech, I think it's getting better. You can trust some of that tech, you can use it. 
I think the, the key thing for me is is working with it before you get to that race day and knowing that it's, it's you know give it m most amount of time to make sure you can get it right on that day I think so that's kind of mm. I've had a really positive experience it's getting better I would say yeah and I would say all of the kind of tech that's geared around the series of Garmin's got this new stamina thing which kind of real time looks at your stamina as it drops down and there's power across a number of different wearables to help you kind of, all of it is trying to help you manage your race to basically don't go out too quick it all comes yeah. back to that really yeah. in a way <laughs> and actually that is key. So you used to be able to do that on field, or if you had a coach, you know, he'd drill down, he'd tell me my splits, and you've had a coach as well, Jane, and yeah. they'll just, and that I think would really help. But like, all these things are encouraging you to not do that. So, yeah. for example, at the marathon last year, I ended up blowing up. Jane ran a lovely negative split. Was that from a coach or from a piece of tech? <laughs> a, a coach. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I use my watch as a stopwatch, so. Is that tech? <laughs> <laughs> or is that just a calculator? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect. But that's a really good example of somebody's running on feel very well. But if you can't do that, it's a very hard knack to master for lots of people. I've used pace brain races and it's I've done big negative splits on it. It has told me to go like basically it's an uphill section, relax, you're gonna get the time back, there's a downhill section later. So knowing that just makes you relax. You're always chasing PBs down at the moment. Yes. Do you need something these that helps you go out slower? I think anything that can remind you to not go out too quick. <laughs> <laughs> multiple I'll take I'll take a ding on my watch. I'll take a, I'll take a smack in the face <laughs> to stop me from blowing up a marathon. So yeah. all of those things sound like really exciting prospects. Brilliant. So as mentioned at the top of the video, we are here in Box Park as part of the launch of this brand new shoe from On. I'm joined here by Marta from On to get a bit of an inside scoop on the design process. So. The Cloud Monsters is something different that we've seen from on before, and there's there's quite a lot of shoe going on here. It's a bit, it is a bit of a beast. So, where did the concept come from? So, essentially, we always take on board feedback from our dealers and our customers, and we actually saw that there was a gap in the products that we were already offering. So, essentially, what we did is that we developed our version of Max Cushioning Shoe. Uh, we still got the cloud tech and also the innovation in there of the traditional cloud tech, but we've just changed it a little bit. Um, we've got a lot bigger clouds now, you know, to get that max uh, cushioning as well. Um, and then, yeah, still giving you that really, really responsive ride like you used to with the cloud tech, the original one. Um, but yeah, just technology and advances in materials has allowed us now to actually go all out there max cushioning, max uh, energy return as well, so. Lo lots of cloud tech, loads yeah. of that springy feeling underfoot. So what kind of runner do you think this shoe is sort of designed at? Who, who's the kind of runner you're positioning this shoe for? So this shoe is actually created with the recreational runner in mind. So the person who, you know, likes a bit of uh, getting the PBs, but it's not necessarily the main goal of their all of their sessions. Uh, so essentially it's just for the person who likes a bit more softness on the foot, uh, also putting the fun into the run with the feeling, because it's an amazingly weird feeling to run on the Cloud Monster, like yeah. never before. Yeah, make it fun. Like that whole idea of like instant yeah. fun, you slip on the shoes and you're mm -hmm. kind of good to go. Now, I, I'm a bit of a shoe geek. I'm really interested in always in the design process, like what's gone into the sort of creation of making these shoes. Can, can you give us a bit of an inside scoop on that? Yeah, absolutely, I can. So essentially, because technology has advanced a lot and technology is always the driver in our innovation teams, uh, so we actually found a computer simulation model that would test the geometry of the shoe. So to find that actual maximum point of cushioning that we could put in a shoe, but not uh, compromising on the performance. So essentially we're using a lot of tech, checking out, and then we also have athlete product testers. So essentially the creation process from start to the finished product that you have here is quite exhaustive. Um, and we get a lot of feedback from our testers. Um, and then also we do a few changes here and there, create new samples, and we call them monsters as well, by the way. So that's the cool fact, all of the prototypes. <laughs> all so, called monsters. Yes, they're all called monsters because they are created in the labs in Zurich. Uh, if you think about it, it kind of looks similar to what we get in the finished product, but it's very much like homemade sort of look and feel. So yeah, it's just to prove the concept essentially. And how long is that that process then? That process you're describing of testing it with athletes, changing the different iterations and having these different monsters running around the lab. Like what's the, what's the time scale to, to create a shoe like this? 
So from start to finish of the design process, it probably takes a couple of years, but actually the testing process takes about a year because there will be two to three prototypes for our athletes to test and give feedback on. And then we will alter the samples uh, and get the samples sent out. And then the final product will be almost a year after the initial testing, so. So interesting, so interesting, Martha. Thank you so much for, for joining us here at Box Park. There'll be a link in the description as well if you want to find out more about the Cloud Monster. And I'm looking forward to going out on a run of them now. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. I look forward to it as well. <laughs>Okay, so we've covered what's available now, but let's look forward to the future. I mean, you guys have got such a wealth of knowledge. Like, what is the what does the future of running tech look like in, 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 your, in your personal opinion? I mean, I think we've seen a lot. We've seen a lot from big companies, a lot from startups. They've tried, you know, to explore different ideas. A lot of those ideas have kind of fallen flat, I think. Some have been really good. What I would like to see and what I hope we see from this space is that we will add value to the tech that actually already works really well. So I think watches and shoes, those are the things we know work. So it's about adding value to those things. So what I think we're going to see, we're going to see more kind of biomarkers and sensors we're going to be able to kind of track from our watches. I think that's going to happen in the next couple of years as companies I've spoken to who are, you know, are talking to major companies to put it in their devices. So things like um, tracking hydration, um, the, the blood pressure, glucose, all those kind of health things that kind of give you a bit bigger holistic picture of what your, you know, what your body is saying and you can use that information better. Um, I don't think we've heard the last of kind of connected clothing. I think it's got, still got a far, you know, a long way to go. It needs to become cheaper, more accessible. It needs to be more accessible for people for different fits as well. And I think, you know, I don't think we've heard the last of kind of smart shoes as well. And I think there's more to happen in that space. I think it's getting better. The information from your feet, you know, is going to be the best for runners. So if you can get more information and useful information that works with your other devices, I think, you know, there's more to kind of happy, happen from that space. And the other thing I'd also add is I think devices are going to get better in terms of coaching. And I think, you know, we're already seeing that already in terms of guidance and coaching from these devices. You know, AI is being used a lot in this space. AI is not perfect, it's getting better. We've seen it in all the other kind of spaces where AI is kind of making strides. So I think that's an area I particularly, get, I expect to see getting better in terms of using your devices to help you decide what you should be doing, uh, how you should be doing, whether you're making progress. Those are the kind of spaces that I think we're going to see kind of big kind of evolutionary kind of leaps in terms of the tech. Mm, I think that's so true what you say, that thing of like, don't get too ahead of yourself, focus yeah. on what we've got now, like Absolutely. Maybe, maybe refine what we've got now rather than like the new things. What, yeah. what about you, Kieran? What, what do you see in your crystal ball of the future? Well, I think what Mike says a lot of it is it's bang on. I think there'll be a lot of convergence actually. So one of the things we're sort of seeing a lot of devices crop up. So you might be wearing a, a CGM, you might be wearing kind of sleep track, you might have a ring that does your kind of readiness, you've got a pair of smart shoes. At some point, all this stuff is going to have to come together somehow in some way, whether or not that sense is being brought into one kind of universe or things getting built into the watches. And to me, it all points in sort of one direction, which is kind of hyper-personalization. And what I'm really fascinated about, I kind of look into a lot of the kind of sports science studies and hear what the labs are talking about and what's going on there. And what you realize is a lot of the recommendations that we have about how what we should eat, how we should run, how we should train, we're all done on kind of sub 30 minute 10K runners like Nick. You know, so for a lot of people that's not actually sort of bang on. And I think particularly as well, we talk about kind of female runners are way underrepresented in terms of the, the body of research that's done. What I hope this tech will enable us to do is to get a little bit more what they call N equals one. So I'm, you know, it's self-experimentation. And the more accurate they can get, I think that's one barrier they've got to get to. It has to be more accurate, but also it's just going to enable us to do more self-experimentation and understand ourselves better because you today is different from you tomorrow and the next day anyway and you know you need to be able to, to make those decisions on the fly so that's what i hope for yeah 100 percent. you know your jakob ingebrigtsen's your kipchoge's that's great but what's the trickle down for your everyday runner yeah mm. really excited to see how that evolves what about you good sir what does your crystal ball tell you for the future of tech well i think the guys are spot on with what they said I, for me the focus is always uh, I don't like the side of tech, which is the, the sort of marketing land grab side, where you've got as much information into a piece of tech as you can. So you look at the stats, every brand releases a new watch, there's 10 new metrics they've added in. Next time there's 10 more. Nobody uses them, it, and they're not, you don't know, because the people don't use them, they're, they're just there to, for a marketing purpose, really. What I think is, it's that, that joining up of what it does, and how to deliver use off of that. I think that's where we're going to get close to. I think people are wising up to it now. There's a lot of new products that get released. People just go, 
you know, it's useless. I don't. It, it, it sounds good. You, you you see it. You see the market. You go, wow, that'd be amazing. And then you realise actually, it's not that useful. And I think people are wising up to that now. And I think in the future, it's going to be more about, especially what Mike was saying there, where you get that data. But what do you do with it? It's, it's we've, we've said it many times. Is there's lots of useful information you get. Normal people don't know what to do with it, and that's the key. That's the thing that people want. And it might be that they don't need it. There is no use to it. And then I think we'll see tech coming out where they realise that and they don't try and just throw everything at it so that it's you know 100 pounds more expensive because it gives you 10 more stats when nobody needs those 10 stats except apart from Nick. And he doesn't, he doesn't really use them anyway. <laughs> He's so. not even here. <laughs> Stupid, you're running a fast time somewhere. So I, I think I think it's that you know melding it together, and really making things useful. I think that's what what we're looking for in the next few years. And, and on from that, I think it's got a human element is one of the things. So the best tech that we've used, I think, talks to you in a kind of more human way. I think Aura is really good at that. It gives you guidance that feels easy to understand. But also you've got to remember, I think the best tech is, it's not going to be a replacement for our own judgment, our own decision making. We talked a little bit about that. It has to go alongside it, actually. And it has to work with you and help you make a decision. So one of the things I I've always fascinates me, how many posts I see about Garmin's kind of, training load productive am I productive am I detraining am I overtraining people go oh my god I've just done a massive run it was unproductive part of it is because they don't necessarily understand how Garmin is taking in that data and I think some of this is going to have to enable us all to become a little bit more knowledgeable about the sports science that underpins it but in a human way yeah I think and I think also we should applaud that a lot has happened in this space and a lot of kind of you know gains have been made in terms of what we now have at our disposal so that you know there has been stuff there that it actually is really great in terms of having that access now it's that next step that's what we want we know the data's there we know you can get that data now give the user the data in a way that they can understand and put it to good use and that's what i hope and i hope the kind of companies that are in this space are going to look to kind of deliver next basically yeah. one, one more thing firmware I think there's a big focus on firmware here. Tech companies don't tend to give you the opportunity. To, they want you to buy more products. Mm. People don't want to do that anymore. That's not how technology works. Great tech that you can update and you get the benefits as they as they learn them, basically. Mm. More metrics, great, fine, but make sure that it's usable in that thing because it, it, tech is expensive. Mm. And people don't want to keep buying the same things. And we know with sustainability as well. You stop making loads of stuff that people mm. don't need. So I think, yeah, firmware and just making tech that can scale and evolve. Yeah, and I was just going to say, so the other big thing on the on the horizon mm. is clearly subscriptions for some brands, mm. and it's a, that's I think that's going to be a difficult. One. It'd be interesting mm. to see where that goes. More and more people are flicking to kind of a subs model, and I'm not sure I'd get on board with it if I've paid mm. kind of 500 quid yeah. for a device. I don't necessarily want to be tied into another 20 pounds a month to use this thing. So that's going to be an interesting one to watch as well. I think as well that it's got to be incredibly compelling yeah. to, to want to enable a subscription. I think it's that integration that you're talking about. If they can offer me something that's going to be really married to me personally and how I live my life and how I train, then maybe I'm going to consider that sort of monthly payment, I think. It'll be interesting to see if we check in a year from now whether there isn't any flying cars, but maybe my uh, my sort of training kind of status is a bit more accurate rather than crushing my self-esteem after a hard track workout. But thank you, guys. That's really, awesome. really insightful. Cheers. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of Different Gear Live. Pop in the comments what you would like to see from the future of running tech and be sure to subscribe to the Run Testers and tune in to the Big Run podcast. Yeah.